You're listening to the Options Insider Radio Network, the home of the Options Podcast. For more quality options programs, visit theoptionsinsider.com or search for Options Insider Radio Network in your podcast provider of choice. Listeners can also access all of our programming through our mobile app available in the iTunes and Google Play stores. Select programs are also available via live stream at Mixler.com slash options dash insider. That's M-I-X-L-R dot com slash options dash insider. Don't forget to follow along with your favorite programs and submit your own questions for the hosts at Twitter.com slash options, StockTwits.com slash options, Facebook.com slash the options insider, or via questions at the options insider.com. And now, it's time for the show that breaks down the options market from unusual activity alerts to market analysis, strategy overviews, listener questions, and much more. If it involves puts and calls, then our all-star panel will break it down. It's time to hit the option block with your host, Mark Longo, from the Options Insider Media Group and co-hosts Uncle Mike Tussaw from St. Charles Wealth Management, Mark the Greasy Meatball Sebastian from OptionPit.com, Andrew the Rock Lobster, Joe Benazzi from from OptionPit.com and Henry the Flowmaster Schwartz from SIBO. The Option Block is brought to you by SIBO. When it comes to trading volatility, trust SIBO, the creator of the VIX Index, for in-depth and relevant information. SIBO's tools and services gives you up-to-date trade insights, analysis, and positions of VIX options and futures. No matter what kind of trader you are, there's plenty of useful information to take the guesswork out of creating your portfolio strategy and to help you make more educated moves in the market. Visit www.cboe.com com slash VIX today to learn more. And now get ready to hit the auction block. All right, everybody. That music means we are back once again for episode due of your bi-weekly options extravaganza known around the world as the option block. My name, of course, Mark Longo from the options insider.com as well as from the ever engaging, ever insightful, at least we tend to think so. Options Insider Radio Network. Remembering you a couple of things. First off, if you like what you hear, do keep rating and reviewing on your platform of choice. It's available everywhere under the sun. If you like what you hear, if you want new people to continue to discover the show, here we are, well over a thousand episodes strong. <laughs> Leave that review. It does help new people discover the content. And of course, if you want to go above and beyond, there's not enough content on the network for you. You need more in your lives, including, let's say, great pro Q&A sessions. Had a great one with the folks from IB yesterday. Let's say options oddities. You don't want your broadcast week to end with volatility views on Friday. You want a little more in your life afterwards. You want to win the pro trading crate, just like Stego did yesterday. Stegosaurus, congratulations to you. Another pro trading crate winner of the February pro trading crate. You want to get your name in the hat for those winnings and all those drawings, as well as, of course, everything else we do here, live streams, all the fun, theoptionsinsider.com slash pro is the place to go to begin your journey to the dark side. Let's see who's joining us today on our journey to the dark side of options. First, let's go out to a quiet, a sleepy, some might say a tranquil hamlet known as St. Charles, where we are joined once again by the uncleist of Mike's, Mr. Uncle Mike Tussaw from St. Charles Wealth Management. Uncle Mike, welcome back to Ye Old OB, sir. Always happy to be back on Ye Old OB. Always happy to have you, sir. And also joining us, from parts unknown on the shores of Maine, where it's always dark, always stormy, and he's always grumpy. It's the rockingest of lobsters, Mr. Andrew Giovinazzi from OptionPit.com. Mr. G, welcome back to the show to you as well. I'm uh, I'm happy to be here, and uh, I'm excited to hear what the Flowmaster has to say in the odd block. Did you... I got I have so much excitement. I, <laughs> I'm I can't even believe it. You're bursting over. You're even ruining our special guest for today. Spoilers ahead of time. Yes, we are joined, rolling out the uh, SIBO hot seat this week for our old friend, the flow master, Mr. Henry Schwartz, a.k.a. the global head of client engagement data and access solutions over there at SIBO. I do believe he is beaming to us right now from the Millennium Falcon down there in Orlando. He is riding that ride as we speak. Mr. Flowmaster, welcome back to the show. How go things in the new options mecca of Orlando, sir. 
Uh, things are good. I'm, I'm happy to be here. And, and yes, I, I get a week in Orlando. It is a work week, but you know how these things go. We kind of work a little fun in as well. And I, I got to hit that Star Wars land at, at <laughs> Disney Hollywood Studios. You can't, and it kind of blew my mind. You can't go all the way down to Orlando and not hit at least one park. And yeah, the, the Galaxy's Edge area is, is pretty amazing. Uh, speaking as someone who's done one or two shows from the parks myself over the years, they are pretty fun as we keep on rolling right on into the trading block. It's time to break down the latest topics, trades, and trends in the world of options. It's time for The Trading Block. Welcome to The Trading Block, the portion of the show where we break down what the heck is trading. And yes, I did do a show, especially from Hollywood Studios, the land of of Star Wars land. There's a little bench in there, right? It's inside the entrance near the guest services, which they have named after us now in our honor, having broadcast volatility views from there. A few years ago, a few other parks, a few other select locations throughout the parks over the years have made cameos here on the network. Let's see what kind of action we got lighting up our tape out there today. Listeners, that's a bit of a mixed bag. Kind of depends where you hang out in the market, what kind of day you're having. If you're old school, if you're hanging out in the old Dow 30, you're having a party. You're saying, woohoo, great day for me, up about a third of a percent right now. If you're in the S&P, you're not quite having as great of a day. You're a little bit of a bummer. You're off a little bit over a tenth, closing in on 0.15% out there. And if you're in the NASDAQ, you're you're pretty much, you got a frowny face on out there today. You're off about a third of a percent. So again, very much a mixed bag out there in the markets, which kind of reflects all the mixed sentiment, all the mixed messages we're hearing from people all over the place. This is the best market ever. This is the worst market ever. Everything is dire. Everything is great. All of that being processed in the market every day. As a result, a bit of a mixed bag out there. Not exactly surprising. And coming into the start of the show, given the fact that things are mixed, we're seeing most of our ball friends doing a bit of an exhale out there today. Bix coming into showtime at about a 2040, down about six tenths of a point. Uh, VVIX, the vol of vol itself at about a 78. So getting back down there again, down about seven handles from where we were this time last year. I know we haven't moved a ton in the last few sessions, so I, I get the math behind it. But just intuitively, a vol of vol of a 78 right now seems a wee bit low. Uh, VXX, 11 and a half down about a quarter from last show. UVXY right back to that five handle. It's been glued to for the better part of the last month and change down about a tenth of a point. Uh, SVIX, 17 and a half to take it up about half a point. SVIX, of course, our inverse friend out there. And then UVIX at an 18 down a full point. And then rounding out our Vol panoply here today, we got Vol Q, 2540 down a little over a point, about 1.1 points. So a lot to unpack. Let's go around the horn the opposite of the way we started. Let's start out there in the options mecca of Orlando. First off, Mr. Flowmaster, what was your favorite ride of the trip so far? And then B, if you have time, what is lighting up your tape out there today? Well, I'll tell you, we the the group that went over to Hollywood Studios, we had the fast pass set for some, a woman I work with is super organized. She's like, okay, so first we go to Star Wars <laughs> and then we do this. And I only got to do the two Star Wars rides because I had to take a call, so I missed the Twilight Zone uh, hotel elevator crash oh, ride. The dropping I, elevator. I, <laughs> I, 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 it's hilarious that we both basically like it actually did work inside that park because I was hiding over by the, by where all the um, stormtroopers were walking around. And every time they'd come by it, people would start to kind of make noise and I'd have to mute my call. And um, it was pretty You don't fun, want but... stormtroopers yelling in the background of your call? Uh, well, I showed them the Millennium Falcon at the very beginning. I said, you won't believe where I was. I thought that I made people might think that was kind of cool. <laughs> I don't know if they did or not, but, um, but you know what? It's kind of a nice week to be, uh, not paying 100% attention to the market because things are kind of quiet. The um, uh, Today's super duper light. I think we're looking at total option volume under 40 million contracts for the first time in a while. And you're right, VIX is just kind of, you know, it would just, it's, I think today's the fourth down day in a row. And, you know, obviously the market's kind of come off a little bit. Um, I think there's a lot of people that are just kind of, you know, as you said, there's a, a lot of headlines about, uh, whether the the market's going to go down another twenty percent, or whether the the Fed's going to, you know, people are going to start to see the end of the tunnel in terms of the rate hikes, and so we're just kind of in a middle zone, and it, it really does not feel like there's uh, a ton of activity um, trading around it. So a little a little bit of a breather for us. A little bit of a breather, I should say, on that ride of resistance, a rise of resistance ride, I should say. That's a great one. If you haven't been down there, listeners, I, it's even. 
dismissive to call it a ride. It's more of a 20 minute experience that you're going to wait four hours in line for. But it is pretty freaking amazing. Probably about the best theme park attraction on the planet right now. Let's go out there to a man who loves himself a good theme park, also known as the Rock Lobster. In fact, when I'm not talking to him, he's always down at Orlando or out there in Hollywood hitting the parks. Uh, Mr. Rock Lobster, what is your favorite amusement park attraction? And then B, if you have time, sir, what is catching your eye in the markets out there today? <laughs> um, <laughs> I was about to say, my favorite amusement park attraction we can't even discuss here. Because I don't think it's G-rated. What do you know less about, 80s wrestling or amusement parks? <laughs> I'm going to say 80s wrestling because at least I have been to it. Yeah, you know what a roller coaster is at least, yes. Right. So uh, right now I get all my amusement just you know wandering around in the woods at this point. So um, I, 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 as long as a tree doesn't fall on my head. Um, anyway, uh, as far as markets go, I, I think what happened is reality. Um, we have gotten the dose of reality that I think, you know, people bid it up that, you know, the inflation thing is going to be done because Powell's not raising as fast. There was a lot of giddiness. And and then poof, you know, um, we're, we're kind of sitting here with like, all right, well, uh, it, I think it's become – I hate to say it, but after three years, really, of if you think about it, we had, which only everybody's deciding now is the nonsense of the whatever pandemic sell off. Then you had that steep rally back, right? Basically, the do over. Then you had the fueled rally in 2021 with all the stimmy money. And that all came crashing down in 2022 when all of a sudden the Fed was going to be out of. Uh, the QE cycle, and then we had that volatility. So we've had basically, I don't, and it would be nice. This would be a good thing for Russell, but like I feel like we've had probably three years. I, I'm trying to remember Henry because you've been around for a while as well. I'm trying to remember a three year period we've had more realized vol on average for the three total years. Um, I mean, the financial crisis was bad for a year, but I remember like three years that had the the gyrations, and I think. You know, and and it and what and the easiest way to think about that is how VIX is priced currently with VIX at twenty. We I've been doing this show with you, Mark, for ten years, and in the past, when VIX was twenty, we'd be giddy and excited. Things were moving. You know, we're like, ooh, you know, we're almost in the zone of the dark. You know, the danger zone. Like <laughs> almost time for there. logins. Yes, right. We like. There was reasons like 20 was to be a thing, right? And we have been at a 20 VIX this this year, like all year in zone three, one zone. This is the year of the no zone. <laughs> so we just, we don't leave a quartile of all, which is unbelievable. Um, but it's happening. And it's, so basically what the market does, it just goes up and down every day and orbits at a high rate and we go nowhere. And I think the big problem was is because, you know, the, the market has been living off of this QE, you know, again, I don't I want I want to use a G rated word, but but it's been living off the, you know, it's been living off the Fed and now it's weaning itself off the Fed and the government is, has to do the same thing. So you're kind of in this unwind process of how long this is going to take, um, you know, when you throw on that some. You know, green initiatives that were kind of messing with the uh, European uh, energy supplies, uh, especially Germany, uh, you know, the war, all this kind of weird stuff. And like all it's it seems like all of these things are now fading to the background somewhat. And traders are trying to, you know, and investors are just trying to get a sense of what's going forward. Um, and what's going forward is higher rates, uh, rates that reflect the fact that governments are borrowing way too much money or an awful lot of money. And um, and now we see where we're going at this point, and that's what we got. We got we have a market stuck at a twenty. I can't see us getting to below sixteen in the next four months, unless something, you know, unless you know, inflation actually starts to come down. So I think we're going to be stuck in this for a while, um, and we're going to end up with some kind of like vol fatigue, which always happens. So liquidity providers keep the vol up because they can. Uh, because there are net buyers 
And we just, we kind of just bounce around um, until we have a direction or something is solved. And every once in a while, we'll have that. And now, like, uh, we'll have a surprise. Either the CPI is too low, it's too high. Um, like we had last week with that uh, PC deflator or whatever it was. Then a Fed chairman will come out at 4,200 and try to throw cold water on everything again. And I, and I think that's, I mean, we're in this cycle and we're kind of stuck in it. Um, but I mean, I think it's weird. Not many site, not many markets are good for iron condors, but I think this is going to be a good one. You just sell 3,600 puts and you sell 4,200 or 4,300 calls and do nothing and go play golf. Actually, maybe I would do that and just go to Orlando. Give it a try. What the heck? But it's not my normal thing that I like to do. But if that's what the market's giving you, that's what we've got. And uh, on top of that, I would say it will be a little bit more of a stock picker's market because there's you know there's always companies that do a little better. Um, and I think this will be the year of some companies will be outperforming. But uh, it it will you would knock me over with a feather if we have a twenty five percent gain this year. I could see we end up the year like seven six percent something like that. Um, but for right now, I just I'm 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 seeing an orbiting market not going anywhere fast. That does appear to be the case. Let's go out now to the quiet, the tranquil, the always happy, always effervescent hinterlands of St. Charles, where we are joined once again by the unclelist of Mike's, Mr. Uncle Mike, sir. What is lighting up your tape in? I guess if you hang out in the Dow, an Uncle Mike type of day. The Dow, which by the way, just uh, earlier this week, I believe, went negative for the year. So. Maybe not an Uncle Mike type of year for the Dow, but an Uncle Mike type of day, Uncle Mike. Uh, I don't hang out in the Dow. Uh, I hang out in the S&P 500, which represents 80% of all of U.S. business and commerce. Uh, that's how I, That's where I like to hang out. I don't, I don't know anyone who really hangs out in the Dow now that I think about it. <laughs> I, you know, typically... <laughs> My older clients that they see it on TV, and uh, honestly, the only reason <clears throat> that I keep the Dow up on my screen is in case a client calls says, "Oh, I saw the Dow was doing this today. What do you think?" And I gotta think, "Oh crap! I gotta look at the Dow now. I gotta do this. I gotta do that." And then I translate it in my head, but I'm very laser focused on the S and P, uh, and very so that those are the only. I'll be honest; that's the only time I ever really look at the Dow is if a client brings it up. Well, there you go. Outside the Dow, sir, what is lighting up your tape? I mean, a couple things. If this is the market to nowhere, where the market that does nothing, then this is a great market to sell puts on some of the beaten up stocks that um, exist out there. Uh, meaning that um, you know, over the long term, I like I like Apple, I like Amazon, I like Disney, I like Ford, I like Google, I like. Th there's a lot of stocks that I like over the long term. It's, those are just. Uh, those are just uh, the first few on my list uh, going in alphabetical order uh, over the long term. And um, if you like those stocks over the long term, when th there's a lot more out there, then you have a major opportunity right now to buy these stocks. And will you have to deal with some volatility in the short term? Absolutely. Uh, it, they're going to go up. They're going to go down. Uh, they're going to... Uh, do whatever, but you're in a big opportunity now. And if uh, Andrew wants to sell some condors and play golf, uh, which who, who doesn't like playing golf, especially in Orlando, um, then these stocks might not be a bad thing to sell puts on. Now, of course, if you're bullish on these stocks, I would not sell condors on them. I would sell just sell puts to get into them. Uh, but that might not be a bad thing to do if you want to take advantage of a 20 VIX and a market that appears to be going nowhere. Now, I, it does. I will agree that the market appears to be going nowhere. However, the market seldom, if ever, does what I think it appears to be doing. So, from that standpoint, um, I think that uh, a lot of times when bull markets come or rallies come, they often come before you expect them. And I think that at, at this point in time. It is worth going through some volatility to buy into this market, whether it's at uh, in a stock in uh, the market itself, whatever the case may be. Now, some other things that I'm seeing right now: uh, ten-year note uh, bonds are still getting shellacked right now. Uh, we have a ten-year yield that is—I don't know if it's over four percent now, but we did go over four percent today at one point on the ten-year yield. Uh, we were flirting with the five percent mark on the two-year. 
And so uh, from there, we actually have some decent competition for stocks right now, because if you're someone who has had to do like a 60-40 portfolio in the past where you're hoping to get 10% with stocks and maybe uh, 1% or 2% with bonds, and that's how you get your 60-40 return, well, now all of a sudden, the bonds are doing it by themselves and shorter term bonds. And so it's we're in a different dynamic right now than we have been in many, many, many years. Roe is back. And so you have to be aware of the fact that bonds do play a bigger part in what uh, is happening right now. And with the bond values that have dipped like they have, bonds are a lot more attractive than they were a little over a year ago. Now, the other thing that I think we need to keep an eye on in this, uh, I I hate to say new normal, but new back to normal of us actually having interest rates like we used to in years past, dividend stocks aren't going to be as attractive as they once were. A lot of times people were going for dividend stocks as a way of getting some income, but why would you do that now if you can get uh, 5% on the two-year? Uh, no, I still own dividend stocks. I still think there's a place for them in uh, people's portfolios, but that's the mentality of people that want to have a rush to safety. Now, a couple other things that we have happening going on. Uh, we do have the energy sector uh, still in the mid 80s, just looking at XLE uh, and looking at the commodities right now. Uh, we do still have oil and it's uh A little bit higher than it was from our Monday show, but we're still in the 70s. Uh, And then uh, my beloved silver uh, is still down uh, from where it's been, but we are holding the line at the 19 level. And uh, the the other interesting thing about this sell-off, we've had stocks sell-off, bonds sell-off, and um, silver is something that uh, has not been the rush to safety, so to speak. So at some point, this money is going to appear. It didn't just die and go to money heaven. But at some point, the sell-off in a lot of the major asset classes, it's going to come out somewhere. And I have a hard time believing that it's all just going to never show up again uh, from where it's at. So where's the money going to appear at some point? That's the key question. We shall see. A lot of it appeared already first couple of months of the year. All the people were buying stuff. And then uh, lately, of, of course, it has faltered somewhat out there. Like we said, down now uh, red. I'm not sure if today's move changes that, but it was red coming into the show out there today. Red on the year. Let's see if overall volume is red or kind of green. And as Henry and everybody else alluded to, not a heck of a lot going on. Probably because Henry's out there busy riding the Millennium Falcon. No one's out there tracking all the flow. Out there today. Let's see what's going on in VIX land first, listeners. Uh, VIX doing a whole heck of a lot of nothing right now. 157,000 contracts on the tape. Uh, the ADV, 658,000 contracts. SPY looking a little bit more respectable, closing in on 5 million contracts, about 4.7 million. The ADV is right around 9 million out there. So SPY still seems on pace to exceed its ADV out there. The S, 1.4 million, which is pretty close to half of the ADV, which has come in a little bit now. It's down to about 2.65 million out there. Then let's keep on rolling to small caps, IWM. 356,000 contracts out there. That's pretty light. The ADV is 803. So not quite half, but it's closing in. And then the Qs, 1.4 million contracts. Qs always hanging out right around 1.5 million right now. That's pretty much the case again today. Uh, The ADV is still exactly about 3 million out there. So Qs also on pace for another Three million contract day out there. Let's go to the single names. Let's see if this is a day that single names have forgot. And the answer is not really. It's a little bit of paper out there. 201,000 contracts to be precise. That's what it costs to break into the top 10 today. That gets you to our old friend Alphabet, a.k.a. Google. I was joking a few weeks ago (laughs) that, you know, it's a quiet day when Alphabet breaks into the top 10. And ever since I said that, they've gone on this AI binge. They've had their earnings. And now they're in there every day. So... Maybe a little bit, bit of a paradigm shift out there for good old Google L hanging out right around 90 and two thirds right now, about a third of a buck on the day. And again, good for 201,000 contracts out there. Number nine, one of our old friends back in the top 10 rotation. This was Snowflake. You remember them a few years back? They were a hot IPO, then they kind of fell off. Then within the last six months, it seemed like they got a little bit hot again with some of their earnings, and they have uh, earnings again this week. So that's obviously driving. Some paper out there and the driving 
is not exactly looking good <laughs> for Snowflake right now. It's off 20, almost 21 handles or 13 and a half percent, trading right around 133 and two thirds. So obviously uh, the earnings no bueno. Uh, they are still off their 52 week low. That came at 110 and a quarter. It looks like that actually came back in June of last year. So when the rest of the market was selling off, this one got caught up in it. They've had a while to break away from that 52-week low. So 133 and about a half, not too terrible, I guess, for a level. Of course, it's not almost 250 where it was about a year ago. But again, it's not at the 52-week low either. But of course, it is selling off hard today. We shall see how low it can go out there today. A number eight, this one is a perennial top tenor now as well. This is Meta. Ever since they announced those layoffs, things just have been changing out there. Stock obviously has rallied quite a bit. It's kind of unch on the day today, hanging out right around 173 and a third, but good for 211,000 contracts and the number eight spot on our top 10 this week. Number seven, heading out to Salesforce. Uh, they've been making some headlines, blowing the cover off the ball with their earnings this week. So that surprised a lot of people. The stock doing an inverse snowflake up nearly 20 handles, 19 bucks right now, or about 11 and a third percent, trading right around 186 and a third right now. So a good run for Salesforce. It is exactly $60 north of its 52-week low of 126 and a third. Let's see, when do they hit that? They hit that back right at the end of the year, beginning of the year, end of the year, right around the end of December, beginning of January was kind of their nadir for the year. And they have rallied nice. 60 handles from there. So nice pop here for Salesforce. Even if still net a year ago, they are still down net about 24 handles over the past year. So a little over 11.5%. Their high for the year is actually 222. But a good day for Salesforce out there. Number six, going to the chip zone. It is hanging out pretty much in its usual spot. It is NVIDIA. One thing you will notice, listeners, all this earnings paper Popping into the top 10. Our old friend AMD, nowhere to be found. Hasn't been for a while. Getting kicked to the curb. NVIDIA still in there. NVIDIA's been lighting it up of late. So NVIDIA still hanging out in his chip zone today at number six. But no love for AMD out there. Uh, NVIDIA 227 and about two-thirds. Up about two-thirds today. Let's see. And in terms of paper, 387,000 contracts on the tape. By the way, Salesforce doing 340,000 for number seven before. Number five, now we go off to the Amazonians, dropping a bit down to number five, 391,000 contracts for them. They're hanging out a little bit shy of 91 right now, off about a buck and a quarter. They're almost exactly $10 north of the 52-week low out there, which was 81 and change. They set not too long ago. Can they retest that? I suppose we'll have to wait and see. Number, what we got? Number four we're on now. Number four. Silvergate Capital Corp, ticker symbol SI. This one doing 393,000 contracts. They are taking a huge drubbing out there. Off seven and a quarter, over 50%, 53.6%, trading six and a quarter right now. They're concerned about being a going concern going forward. Never good news. For any sort of company out there, and obviously that's what's driving all of this paper out there. Good again for number four today, 393,000 contracts. Number three, we've got the fruit company. It's been hanging out at three for a while now. It's Apple doing a whole heck of a lot of nothing right now. 409,000 contracts on the tape off about three quarters of a buck or about half a percent right now. Uh, you know, the low 124 and change. So about as almost exactly $20 north of that right now. We asked you our poll. Just last week, which one will it hit first, 52-week low or 52-week high? And you guys, most of you, about three-quarters of you, chose the low. And we do seem to be moving in that direction right now. Number two, once again, hanging out at the top of our top 10. It is AMC, 427,000 contracts. AMC retreating again today off about half a buck or about 7.1%, trading 610 right now. And again, good for 427,000 contracts. You know, number one is, you don't need me to tell you, it's Tesla. They had their earnings day, or I should say their investor day. And they didn't really talk much about investing. They talked about the future and about saving the planet and all these other big picture things. I think the investors were a little bit more interested in hearing about, hey, what's the next car going to be? So they're not liking the news. They're off about 12.3 handles right now, a little over 6%, trading right around 190 right now. Still obviously well off their 52-week low they set not too long ago of 101 but not a great day out there for the Tesla folks. 
Let's see if things are shaping up on the earnings front to be a great week, a pretty active week, all things considered. Zoom on Monday, Target and Rivian and AMC on Tuesday. Wednesday, we had Wendy's, Lowe's, Dollar Tree, Kohl's, Salesforce, and the aforementioned Snowflake. Thursday, Best Buy, Macy's, Kroger, Big Lots, Portillo's. Going to get some Italian beef ball today. Costco, Marvell, Dell, Six Flags, and more. Let's see what we got on the earnings front here. We had a Snowflake after the bell yesterday. Let's see. They were at 154 and a half. We obviously hadn't told you the level. They're outperforming dramatically. They're pricing an 8.8%. And as of the time we ran this report, they had delivered nearly 15%. So big outperformance there. Oh, Funko. What's going on in Toy and Pop Vol? They were yesterday after the bell as well. They were at 10 and a, 1070 going into their announcements. They're pricing in 12.5%. They delivered about 16%. They were trading about nine bucks. Let's go pull them up really quickly. I haven't talked about Funko before here on the network. Trading about 10 bucks now. It's like they have rallied about a buck from when we ran this report earlier this morning. Portillo's, they were this morning before the bell. What's going on in Italian beef and rib and hot dog vol out there? Let's see. Today before the bell, they were about 22 and a third when they announced their, or went into their announcement, I should say. They're pricing in 7.3%. They delivered about 6%. Uh, they were trading about 21 bucks when we ran the support. They've rallied a little bit as well. They're trading 2144 right now, but obviously the number is not great. This bottom line beat. They said they pop big, but right now they are and they missed fourth quarter revenue. So maybe things aren't all rosy in the land of Italian beef and hot dogs. Six flags, second before the bell today as well. 26 and three quarters is where they were trading going into their announcement. They're pricing in 8.8%. They delivered 5.4%, so a bit of underperformance there for Six Flags as well. You guys can check out all those reports, the earnings move results report, the earnings move report, the upcoming earnings report. We got Costco, Marvell, and Dell popping off today after the bell. The season right now hanging out right around 112%. Remember I said a few weeks ago, can't really sustain this 150% it was hanging out at, and that is the case, down to about 112 right now. That's still substantially above our long-term average of 92%. And in terms of earnings trades, no new trades being entered or exited today. We are still monitoring 67 long straddles and 47 long calendars. Where do you go to see all those reports for yourselves for free because we love you folks? Theoptionsinsider.com. Click on the Options News and Articles tab to begin your journey as we continue our journey right on into the odd block. It's time to break down the most interesting, unusual, and downright questionable options activity that's been identified by TheOptionsInsider.com. It's time for The Odd Block. All right, everybody, welcome to The Odd Block, the portion of the show. Where we get weird, we get a little wild, we get a little whimsical. Kind of a light day out there, but luckily we got the Flowmaster joining us here today to help us find some fun activity. Sounds like Mr. Flowmaster, your first one that you've identified here is over in here, ironically enough. Turtle Beach Corp. You know them listeners, they make all the headsets and headphones, everything you use for gaming peripherals out there. Ticker symbol here, H-E-A-R, trading $7.83. Been a rough year for them, off 14 and three quarters, 65% on the year. Uh, today, you're kind of unched on the day. And looks like, let's see, their low came 622. Like that was back in the October time frame of last year. Mr. Flowmaster, uh, good old Turtle Beach coming on your radar, sir. What intrigued you about Turtle Beach today? Yeah, I mean, this, this was not a crazy, aggressive, humongous call buyer, but, but a, a, an unusually large call buyer. Somebody paid... A buck fifteen for twenty five hundred of the June eight calls, about almost an hour into the day, and and stock was seven seventy five, and you know as you said it's it's a pretty beaten up stock, and you know slightly longer term trade, but you know kind of like you know like you guys were saying it's a little bit of a stock pickers market. I mean that's actually what last year was too, right? Like you know the market was down twenty percent you know plus in in twenty twenty two, but 
one of the reasons, you know, that VIX didn't explode was because you had these pockets of, you know, some things were actually doing fine in a, you know, increasing rate environment, right? And so that kind of, you know, diversification in, in a way, right? You know, the S&P was still down, but, uh, you know, it, it meant that you had you had some people's portfolios really didn't feel that bad. And then you had other people, you know, some people that were down, you know, we, we know plenty of stocks that are down, you know, 50, 60, 70%. So um, this one just kind of caught my eye because it's a beat up name. It's, it's a, you know, almost a $300,000 trade. So it's a decent size. It includes earnings. Earnings are in the beginning of in beginning of March. Um, so you know, this is one of the ones I look at, and and you know, I mean, try to figure out if there's something I could turn it into. You know, may, I, I might not just go out and get along the stock, although it's an eight dollar stock. So you know, maybe maybe that's just what I would do. But um, it's also pretty juicy yield if you wanted to buy the stock and sell those calls. So um, that was the first one that that I saw. Oh, before you move on there, Mr. Flowmaster, or excuse me, Mr. Rock Lobster, you recall we talked about uh, Turtle Beach a few times on Options Oddities. It was last year. It's one of those ones that came up on my radar. I didn't even know it was public until we started talking about it on Options Oddities uh, last year. I do like the ticker, by the way, here. I do love a good appropriate ticker. As I recall, when we talked about it last year on Options Oddities, the stock was continuing to trend lower, and we kept seeing people pile into ever further out-of-the-money strikes on puts and just waste a ton of money. Do you recall that, Mr. Rock Lobster A, and then B? What do you think of these out of the money June calls, sir, for a buck fifteen? Uh, yeah, I, I remember. I remember us seeing that thing. Um, as far as these calls go, I mean, just I think Mark. I looked at these earlier today. Um, kind of interesting. Um, maybe somebody scooping up. Uh, I mean, it looks like they're looking for a bounce. Basically, I I don't know if there's any. Uh, I don't see. We didn't see anything behind it, but. Um, it, it does look like a little bit of Turtle Beach. I remember this one, but I, I wasn't it a put buyer when we were talking. I'm, yeah, they were garbage put buyers. I'm trying to look to see if I can find. Yeah, but I don't, the I don't now. think it got that low. No, that's the thing. They this wasted all their money. Somebody on looking it. the other way. Here it is. They were. This was back on our December 17th show of 2021. So it's been a little bit now. And someone kept gobbling up. The stock was 25 bucks. So way higher. Ah. And they were okay. they kept buying the they rolled from the twenty two puts down to the seventeen half puts and they kept buying lower and lower puts and we kept saying what are they doing they're throwing good money after bad and uh, it kept not working out I guess if they had bought them long term it would have worked out because the stock is seven yeah. bucks now that was twenty twenty one it yeah. feels like it was like three months ago it does I thought it was more recent than that too I thought we were just yeah. talking about that <laughs> so there we go time flies when you're talking crazy crazy turtle beach puts All right, Mr Flowmaster what else was lighting up your tape out there today, sir? Uh, well, there's one. There was some uh, post earnings action in Billy. Billy, Billy. Uh, it's an ADR out of China. I don't even know what they do. I assume it's something tech related. But you know, another one of these you know beaten up stocks. Uh, a little bit though. But um, what's funky is stocks up like a buck, a little bit more than a buck after earnings. So it's close to twenty one. But what what surprised me on this one was there were some put sellers which. You know, some people certainly jump in thinking that they can take advantage of all crush or that, you know, any bad news might have come out. Um, but then the, there were some call buyers a little bit longer dated, like in the June level, uh, 39 strike and it's opening. So and this is a twenty one dollar stock. So these are you know 87 percent out of the money calls. Um, and they're you know, they weren't dirt cheap. I think uh, traded for forty one cents. So. That's kind of interesting. Um, you know, I, I think that I, I, I agree with um, Mike and Andrew that, you know, I think Vol is going to be kind of muted this year, actually. And I, and I listened to your advisor's show this morning, too. And, and I, I know that's what Ken and uh, Matt also said is, you know, we just kind of expect Vol to chug around 20, which is, you know, certainly what we've seen. Um, but I think we'll have some little pockets of, of excitement and, you know, China's kind of that whole sector, the, whole, the you know the, the stocks, the ADRs out of China have been through through a lot, you know, since COVID. And um, I don't know this one, the thirty nine strike really makes me kind of wonder what the heck. And it's a decent sized trade. There's a couple thousand of them. So um, that was the second one. That I Good old Billy Billy here. We talked about this before, listeners. Billy Billy. This is an ADR out of China. They do some sort of IT uh, trading. Twenty, almost twenty one bucks right now. About twenty ninety five. Listeners, up about a buck and a quarter. So a nice day for them today, six and a half percent. 
on the year. A bit of a different story. They're off about 31%. Uh, they were trading 30 bucks a year ago. Their high came in March of last year at around 35 bucks, and their low came eight and a quarter back in November of last year. So they've had a nice run since last November. And uh, you're right. These calls, 1,884 of the June 39 calls. Listen, this looks like someone gobbling those up for a whopping 49 cents. Yes, I said the stock's not even 21 bucks, and they're buying the June 39s for 41 cents. <laughs> I like that one. That's, that's about an 85 volatility. Mr. Mr. Rock Lobster, that has the whiff of some good old-fashioned 2021 paper about it, sir. Oh, <laughs> Stock's at 21 bucks, so you buy the 39s. Why not? Well, <laughs> hope springs eternal. You know what? I also saw there was also some other paper today in a uh, – in a um, – some kind of a like semiconductor wafer Chinese manufacturer that was a big bid. Uh, so that it, it, it looks like it felt like it was kind of sprinkled around a little bit here. In uh, Somebody is buying some China uh, looking for the much-awaited reopening trade for China. I believe we have been waiting for that trade now for nigh on multiple, multiple years. <laughs> so... Uh, yeah, it's been like two years, the China reopening trade. So I, this feels like this kind of paper to me. Wake up in the morning, sprinkle a little bit of China in your portfolio. You got one more coming across your radar today, Mr. Flowmaster, this time going out into the land of energy storage. We'll catch your eye out there, sir. Yeah, this was uh, a little one, a three and a half dollar stock, NRGV. I think they make maybe batteries for uh, like house size batteries to to as power wall kind of things. Um, and you know, the, it, it, you mentioned, you know, the kind of the, the echoes of 2021 and the meme craze and this and that, uh, you know, I think the flow out there is generally, uh, more balanced. There's not nearly as much of that, uh, rampant speculation, but I do think pe there are pockets of it. And I actually think people are very consciously, uh, looking for low dollar stocks. Um, you know, anything with the potential of, of, just, you know, getting hot all of a sudden where, you know, where you could see a, a 20, 30, 40% run. Um, I don't know if NRGV has any difficulty in shorting. It looks like it costs you about 6% to short. So it's not an easy to borrow name. And, um, you know, this really, I, I, I don't know anything about the stock, but it, this just could be somebody kind of looking to, to pick up, uh, some upside in, in things that, you know, that might, you know, jump to life if we, um, you know, if kind of the, you know, right now, I, I think for the last few days, the market's just kind of been um, a little depressing and, you know, we're not crashing, but we're, but we're off the rally highs. And um, so I think people are looking for the spots where they want to put some capital to work and where they, where they feel like there's a decent chance. So, and, and like I said, when it's a stock that's under, you know, under three or $4 and the borrows already a little bit tight, I start to keep a pretty close eye on it. Yes, NRGV listeners, Energy Vault Holdings. I do believe this is a newcomer here to the odd block trading 309 right now off about 14 cents. By the way, this is a Swiss based global energy storage company specializing in gravity and kinetic energy based long duration energy storage products. They're not, doesn't sound like a traditional battery storage. It sounds like they're doing. I don't know, counterweights doing something to store kinetic energy over long periods of time and gravity. I, that's an interesting one. I'll have to dig in and see exactly what they're doing with gravity and kinetic energy. By the way, trading $3.09 right now on the year, a bit of a different story. They kind of got shellacked. They're, they're off 10 bucks or about 76%. Uh, they were trading 13 bucks a year ago. Let's see, they got as high as 22.10. That was in April. But then they just came for it pretty much the rest of the year. So, if you go from April, they're down from twenty two ten down to three dollars right now. So, I guess the market for gravity and kinetic energy based long term storage is kind of muted. What we saw, listeners, as you mentioned, was some call buying. In particular, a thousand lot of the March three half calls. A paper looks like gobbling those up, lifting the offer for thirty cents. They must have liked it because they came back in and did a thousand more after that. Then they did a couple hundred more, total of about twenty six hundred on the day. But the stock was right around here when they did these. Now. You might say they're only going out to March. That's kind of interesting. But there are earnings coming up in a few days here on the 7th. So we will know by next week how these calls feared. So 
probably going to come back to these. By the way, Mr. Rock Lobster, if you want another smells like 2021 data point for you, the vol on these calls is 182%, sir. What say you? <laughs> oh, on the, 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 uh, the, uh, yeah, Mark and I, this is another one. We looked at big money flow today. Um, uh, quite an interesting, uh, yes. Uh, what, what is it like the, they store the energy in gravity boots. I think I try to figure <laughs> out that's, that's where they store the energy or I don't know, or you got an elevator and elevator somehow creates energy going up and down and they store it in battery. Like, I, I, I don't know what the heck it was. So, um, the short answer is, uh, yeah, you know, uh, they're going to start sprinkling out all this green New Deal money is going to be start. You know, the sprinkling is going to start here one of these days. So we'll see. Uh, we'll see how uh, uh, if it if it if it gets to a name like NRGV. But I I, I think at, at least at this point, I, I can't. Um, I can't say they can't be right, you know, um, especially if there's a little bit of short interest or something like that. It just looks like pretty illiquid markets in general. But um, but we, we've seen this before where they start piling into this stuff. It's just wondering, yeah, it was a twenty dollar stock back in the day. So maybe folks are seeing that and they're 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 seeing the. Uh, um, uh, you know, they're seeing the the potential. The very big potential, potential on the, the kinetic energy potential, apparently, uh, of all this stuff. I'm looking at their website now. They have a hydrogen canister. They have tractor trailers. They have giant. I'm, I'm, I don't know what the hell this name does. I need to. I need to they have a video here that explains. I need to check this out. It certainly sounds fascinating. Stock wise doesn't seem like it's the best. But hey, maybe someone hopes the earnings will be a little bit rosier. You like these listeners? NRGV March three halves to 30 cents. Let us know as we keep on rolling. Speaking of you folks letting us know, it is that time, listeners. It is time for the mail block. It's time to take your seat on the all-star panel as we read your emails, tweets, Facebook messages, website comments, and much more. It's time for the Mail Block. All right, everybody, welcome to the Mail Block, the portion of the show where we break down all of your questions and comments to us. Sometimes we turn them around back at you really quickly. Last week's question, let's pay it off now. Apple, I mentioned at the top of the show, the high for the year, 179.61, the low, 120, easy for me to say, 124.17. Which one will it hit first? You guys, overwhelmingly, 77.3% choosing the low, only 227 saying it will kiss the high again. So far, it looks like the market's leaning in your right direction, but again, only time will tell. Our actual question of the week this week, Henry, right up your alley this week as well, is the zero DTE explosion in SPX? increasing intraday volatility very simple yes or no let's go out to the hinterlands first i want to get uncle bike's opinion because he's always injecting vol into this marketplace mr uncle mike zero dte is it causing more intraday vol yes or no and then b what does our audience have to say i mean i don't see how it could cause more intraday vol in some way shape or form i mean the only argument against it that i could see is uh, let's say you have a futures day trader And they're constantly buying and selling and moving the market. Whereas if you're just buying a call and then, as Andrew likes to do, go fly to Orlando and play golf and then fly back the same day, um, then maybe you could say that um, it's not causing more volatility. But I don't think that's how people are using it. So I think it is causing more vol. And uh, I think the audience agrees with me. Mr. Henry, you guys over there at SIBO, you're all about uh, zero a day. What say you, sir? Is it causing more intraday vol? And then B, what do you think our audience has to say? So, I, yeah, I, like you, I, I've answered nothing but questions on zero day trading for the last few weeks. Um, there, there's data that we look at that shows the, the net customer positions and the net market maker positions as the day is playing out. And there was one of the pieces of research that came out was kind of off the wall and basically said, you know, this is, you know, there's, this is going to result in such incredible amounts of gamma that, that, you know, we're sure to go, you know, the volatility is going to be extreme. The, the thing that the data that I've looked at and I, I keep compiling it as I keep talking to more people is the net positions that I've seen in any given line, uh, at any given moment are never more than about 10% of the volume. So 
I mean, so in the morning you have buyers of these, you have sellers of these. Uh, you know, I think there are some flows that might dominate, but there, there really are users on both sides of the equation. But what's funny is you look at, you know, at the end of the day, um, you know, the, uh, like, you know, like today we're trading at 3958, right? So the most active series, what a surprise, it's the 3900 put and it's the daily, right? It expires today. And 45,000 of them have traded. So people start to look at that. And go, okay, well, if we go down there, then you've got 45,000 times the gamma. How many futures does that make? And if it, if it happens in those last, you know, minutes, are we going to see, you know, gamma going to, you know, you know, going to infinity and the, these options going from a zero delta to a one delta uh, to a hundred delta? The, but what's funny is that this this open close data, which I keep talking about any to anybody that will listen, which shows the 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 customer uh, buying and selling and the firm buying and selling the market maker. And really, the truth is, in these zero days, it's, there's no firm activity. It's almost all just customers buying and selling. These contracts, even though they've traded forty five thousand, you know, and we still have a couple hours to go, the customer net is about 6,000 contracts. And the market maker net is about 6,000 contracts. And now I can tell you, the market makers are short about 5,000. So there is a, a pocket there. But you also have to remember, there's, you know, there's, there's basically zero-day contracts available now in SPY and, and, and the futures options as well, right? So the, the world is growing a little bit. But the, the net hedging impact of that, and it'll probably even be smaller by the end of the day, because what happens is people trade into these things and then they trade out of them. And it's not as big as, uh, it's not nearly as big as what everybody's kind of getting a little bit crazy about. So do you think it will get big though? I, I, a quick question. Do you, do you see this growing significantly in, in your opinion? I know I'm asking you to speculate on this, but do you see this growing to be a lot bigger thing where firms do actually um, get into the act. I, 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 it's hard to imagine the volume, you know, it's already a million plus, you know, sometimes a million and a half contracts a day. It, I guess it could get bigger, but, but it's funny. It's unlike the meme, m the meme stock craze where everybody and their brother was opening up an account to buy calls because they heard about all these people making a fortune. Um, this is, th th there's people buying these and doing, doing well, and there's people selling these and doing well and vice versa. There's people buying and selling them that are not making money. Um, but because it's more of a two way market, I don't see it. I don't see it becoming imbalanced. It could get bigger. I get, you know, I guess the volume could, could double again. Um, but I just don't see it getting, uh, so, so insane that it really, it really has significant impact. And then, I mean, the other point of this is, you know, the, it, even though we list these things out 30 days, it's still, you know, the volume all happens on the zero day. So that's why everybody's, you know, some people I think mistakenly assume that we're listing zero day contracts. We're not, we're listing 30 day contracts and time is passing. But um, the, the fact that, especially in SPX, it's a cash settled instrument, right? So you don't have the, the nastiness of, you know, physically settled and having to have the capital to actually take delivery or, or, or get short. Um, the, the, the slate gets cleaned every day at four o'clock basically. So I don't, I, I, I find it's hard to believe, you know, like I said, if somebody can tell me how many futures to be dynamically hedged are a problem, then, uh, we can look at that. You know, I think that, I think that E-minis trade, you know, well over a million contracts a day. So, um, you know, there is some size, I guess, that would be concerning, but I, I don't see how we would get there. And and like I said, it, because there's buyers and sellers, the use case is a very mixed set of use cases for these. It doesn't it doesn't stress me out. So, um, you know, that's it's funny. I, I came in to SIBO as you know the evangelist of of trade alert and the evangelist of options use in general, and now now I get to be the evangelist of of. Uh, Zero, zero day, day baby. You're the, you're Mr. <laughs> zero. You were, were Mr. Nano. Now you're Mr. Zero day. Yeah. I don't think I want to become. <laughs> <Nano> anymore, <so>. <laughs> <laughs> we'll table that one for the time being. All right. The last word is yours, Mr. Rock Lobster. Yes or no. Are they increasing intraday volatility? And what does our audience have to say? Um, what's funny enough is I don't think they're increasing intraday volatility. Um, mostly it's just kind of creating a tempest in a teapot. Um, so I, I don't think they are. I think they do grab liquidity from other products that I think some short data traders might be interested in. And uh, so, I mean, right now, I th 
it's almost the perfect product that the SIBO has finally figured out, you know, all these years. But I think it's the cash settle part, a combination of the daily, you know, you know, for anybody that has the Jones for that day. Um, and I, I think I think the public thinks it is causing more problems, but I personally do not think it is. And mostly for a lot of the reasons that Henry described and everybody forgets liquidity providers don't have just positions in the stuff expiring today. <laughs> they have like stuff in every strike in every term for four years, five years out. <laughs> so it's not their only position. Let's see what the audience has to say. You are the ultimate arbiter at the end of the day, listeners. And right now, a little less than two thirds, 63.3% saying yes. And 36.7% saying no. Get over there at options. On Twitter, you got about a day or so left, listeners, to make your voice heard. All right, and that music means we gassed on so much about zero DTE. No time for around the block today, so we're gonna we're gonna lump it all together. Here, let's start with the Flowmaster, Mister Flowmaster. If there's anything you've got on your radar, you're keeping an eye on until your next appearance next Thursday. Let us know, and then B, if folks want to try out all this cool stuff you guys are cooking up over there in the land of SIBO, where should they go? What should they do? Uh, so we, we're always working on exciting things in, in the platforms we have. Uh, so so I encourage everybody, every single listener, go to SIBO.com slash RMA, which is risk and market analytics, which is what, what I do here. And at the very bottom, there's a contact us box. Just put your name in there. Say, I listen to the option block and I'm interested in uh some of the fancier stuff and we will reach out and set you up with trial and uh let you see the exciting things that that uh that we look at all day long i just went to right now and it, it auto populated my email it knows me it's like oh wow. there you go. so there we go it, it knew me from afar there you go listeners sibo.com slash rma scroll to the bottom of that page maybe it'll auto populate your email too <laughs> over there on that contact us page fill it out let henry uh, reach out to you with all sorts of fun bells and whistles over there in the land of the SIBO. And Mr. Rock Lobster, sir, if folks want to go to the land of the pit, do you have an auto-populating form I can go to as well? Uh, I don't know if we have it. We have a optionbit.com, call Ted 888 and say, hey, uh, I like, I want to learn all the stuff that you talk about, uh, how to trade options, and we're the right place to go. So uh, you get 10% off anything at Option Pit. There you go. And last but not least, Mr. Uncle Mike, sir, if folks want to check out all the cool stuff you have going on on Twitter and YouTube and everywhere else, where should they go? What should they do? Best place to do is follow me on Twitter at Mike Tusaw, T-O-S-A-W. And then uh, you can also check out my website at stcharleswealth.com. There you go, listeners, stcharleswealth.com. That is going to do it for the option block today. But don't worry if you're hanging out in the pro, you want a little bit more content in your lives. We'll be coming back post haste with a taste of this week in futures options, breaking down all the action going on over there in the land of CME on the futures option side. Maybe we'll see what fun zero day stuff is going up over there. So stay tuned for that in a little bit. Pro folks will get it live in their ear holes in a little bit. All the rest of you will get it on demand when it hits the network course coming back tomorrow, noon central 1 PM Eastern for volatility views. And then after that, for all you pro folks there for options oddities, then back again on Monday, another episode of the option block. Stay safe out there, everybody. The Option Block is brought to you by SIBO. When it comes to trading volatility, trust SIBO, the creator of the VIX Index. For in-depth and relevant information, SIBO's tools and services gives you up-to-date trade insights, analysis, and positions of VIX options and futures. No matter what kind of trader you are, there's plenty of useful information to take the guesswork out of creating your portfolio strategy and to help you make more educated moves in the market. Visit www.cboe.com. Com slash VIX today to learn more. You're listening to the Options Insider Radio Network, the home of the Options Podcast. For more quality options programs, visit theoptionsinsider.com or search for Options Insider Radio Network in your podcast provider of choice. Listeners can also access all of our programming through our mobile app available on the iTunes and Google Play stores. Select programs are also available via live stream at Mixler.com slash options dash insider. 
That's M-I-X-L-R dot com slash options dash insider. Don't forget to follow along with your favorite programs and submit your own questions for the hosts at twitter.com slash options, stocktwits.com slash options, facebook.com slash the options insider, or via questions at the options insider.com. <laughs> 